Hey! Do your favorite things in life include a jaunty tune, the freedom of adventure, and some great booty? Have you ever been kicked off a ship because you made the entire crew cry during your rendition of Lever Johnny? Oh, Lever Johnny, Lever. For the voyage is long and the winds don't blow And it's time for us to leave her Well, congratulations! You might be a swords bard. But what is a swords bard? Well, set sail for the open ocean, work on a few of those sea shanties while you're at it, and see if you can figure out why all this pirate shit keeps trending on the kids' apps. Sometimes you just need to get away and go on an epic adventure. Discover new places, meet interesting people, and try to forget the smell of 50 dudes trapped in a small enclosed space. And that's what the Swords Bard is all about. Now, technically speaking, nothing in the description of the Swords Bard explicitly says pirate, but the same goes for the swashbuckler and... Come on, look at him. These dudes scream pirate harder than me anytime I wanted to watch a new movie in the mid-2000s. The Swords Bard is someone who leads their life for the thrill of it, uplifting those around them with their natural charisma and becoming a fierce fighter in the meantime. Oh yeah, did I not mention that this triumphant traveling troubadour is also a complete badass? That's right, confidently taking the top for most versatile bard is one thing, but this fella comes with such a complete package they also find their way fighting up the list for number one gish as well. Not bad for our favorite bagpiping buccaneer, huh? But you wouldn't be considered a spellblade unless you learned a little spellcasting. Like all bards, your spells stem from your connection to the arts, and while that loose definition makes me wonder if any performance art can be considered a focus for your spells, <laughs> You'll probably want to keep things simple with an instrument of some kind. But considering how mobile we like to be, I'd suggest you grab yourself something like a harmonica or a kazoo that allows us to keep at least one hand free during a fight. You also get yourself some of that incredible bardic inspiration to use a bonus action to send a d6 to an ally and allow them to add that number to any ability check, attack roll, or saving throw they need to pass. This is the bard's standout ability and an absolute favorite of mine, as it allows you to actively help your team both in and out of combat, as well as boost the overall morale of the party. So if watching you dive headfirst into a fight armed with nothing but a short sword and a loot wasn't enough to get them motivated for a scrap, this may just be the kick in the pants they need. At second level, bards become a jack of all trades, allowing you to become good at stuff you're not good at by adding half your proficiency bonus to ability checks you aren't proficient in. And you also get the Song of Rest to soothe your crew after a long day of sailing and allow them to get some extra hit points back if they use the hit dice during a short rest. You also get Magical Inspiration as an optional ability, giving the spellcasters a little more utility with your bardic inspiration, so now they can add your d6 to the total of either a healing or a damage dealing spell they cast. But finally, it's third level where our bard takes their biggest step into the path of an adventurer. And like Teenagers taking on hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, or the plot of the second Goofy movie, it's time to go to college. Luckily, we learn a lot in school, gaining expertise in two of the skills we're proficient in, as well as two more at level 10 later on. But we also pick up skills with both medium armor and scimitars, as well as the ability to use our sword as a spellcasting focus for bard spells. Sorry about that, Ludi, you're just gonna have to take second fiddle. I got a new toy now, and this one's a lot more stabby. But you wouldn't be any good at fighting without a fighting style. So you also get the choice between dueling and two-weapon fighting to really flesh out your bard's steez. And while I think dueling is the more interesting option, allowing you to save that bonus action for cool bard stuff, two-weapon fighting can come in clutch when surrounded by enemies and you just need that consistent damage. And finally, rounding off third level, our Swords Bard gains their best ability with the Blade Flourish. Not only does your speed increase by 10 feet anytime you take the attack action on your turn, you gain three new moves you can pull off by spending a Bardic Inspiration die. Each of your Flourish options, whether you choose Defensive, Slashing, or Mobile, will let you add that Inspiration die to the damage, as well as have an additional effect. These are all cool, but your Defensive Flourish is going to be your bread and butter as a Swords Bard, allowing you to dive into to combat with that nice speed boost and then protect yourself while in the mix. And this gets even better as our Bardic Inspiration die increases, allowing you to potentially add an extra 12 to both your damage and AC at later levels. This ability is so busted and absolutely amazing that I'd bet somebody may write a song about your new legendary status in the future. You know, someday. Welcome back, ye scurvy dogs, to DJ Pimento Cheese's Pirate Radio. We've got ourselves another song that is sure to make you dance the gang green out your rotten bones. So, avast me hearties and listen close before I gut you like a stinking fish.
Well, me father told me of a man with all the riz. And he took nobody shit because he stood on biz. He had no trouble fighting, but he loved the flirting more. The envy of the everyman and the girls they did adore. So find me a loot, go grab me a flask. And I'll go work on scrapping so I can kick some ass. Let me figure out a ditty, and I better get a sword. The legendary battle bard is what I'm working toward. Don't take me lightly, don't think I'm out class and if you don't watch yourself you'll wind up on your ass cause i might be good at singing but i'm better with a sword this bard is not just any bard he does everything and more this bard is not just any bard i do everything and more and that's all for now on dj pimenta cheese's pirate radio tune back in next gb in part and remember tip your witches <laughs> hey oh hey we're back Sorry, there must have been some kind of interference with the signal there. Well, moving on, our bard becomes a font of inspiration at level 5, allowing us to regain all our bardic inspiration die on a short rest instead of a long rest for more inspiring songs to our allies and more flourishes to boot. And our bardic inspiration dice bumps up to a d8, so that's neat. But at level 6, we also get counter charm. Yay! This allows you to spend your whole action distracting your allies so they'll have advantage on an enemy's charming or frightening effect. And it's bad. But luckily we also get extra attack at this level so at least it's not a complete waste. Choo! But skipping all the way up to 10th level is where our bard gets access to some magical secrets. This allows you to pick up any 5th level spell from any list. Meaning you can grab killers like Still Wind Strike or Fireball as well as incredible buffs like Blank or... Yes, I've already talked about haste a million times, but it's just so good for Gishes. Giving you a plus two to AC, advantage on deck saves, and an additional action to attack, dash, hide, or disengage. On top of doubling your movement speed for the duration. Now, there is this little caveat about potentially losing your concentration and being made immobile for a round if we take damage, but who said anything about getting hit? Since your Bardic Inspiration die bumps up to a D10, you're averaging an extra five to AC per defensive flourish. Skyrocket rocketing your AC higher than just about any subclass we've seen so far. Wait, you can add shield to that as well? <laughs> you guys are so fucked. At 14th level, we gain the Master's Flourish for the ability to substitute a straight D6 whenever we use a Blade Flourish instead of having to spend one of your precious inspiration dice, essentially giving us just a straight buff to damage and our other abilities for free. We also get access to more magical secrets, but do you guys really need me to talk about high-level D&D spells? Everything on every list is busted as hell at this level. Print it off, staple it to a dartboard, and whatever you hit is the best choice, I promise. They're all that wild. But finally we cap off with a d12 bardic inspiration die at level 15, two more magical secrets at 18 so you can pick up wish and make the DM wish this character never existed, and superior inspiration at level 20 to get back one use of bardic inspiration die if you start a fight without any. Hey, can I just use wish to get myself a 20 level capstone that doesn't suck ass? Anyway, does this swords bard riz its way into our hearts? <laughs> yeah. I've been saving this bard for a hot minute because I knew how much I'd love it, and breaking it down like this did not disappoint. This is one of those subclasses that reminds you how much fun D&D can be with the right combination of abilities. And as much shit as I give the Lizards of the Lock, they did kinda knock it out of the park on this one. And I think most of you guys agree, since it's been the number one bard everybody's been asking me to talk about since I started this channel, so sorry to make you wait, but I think it was worth it. But not only do you do all the bard stuff well with your proficiencies and your expertise and your jack of all trades, you make an excellent mid to close range fighter with the versatility of a full spellcaster and the meaty attack potential of a high tier fighter. Not to mention, the multi-class combos with this are f***ing insane. Hexblade, Swashbuckler, Bladesinger, Battlemaster, Bloodhunter, Echo Knight, Shadow Sorcerer, Soul Knife, and probably plenty more I haven't covered yet make for amazing combos. Then all find new and unique ways to make your DM pull their f***ing hair out. This guy is also why I don't get how people hate bards. I kinda leaned into the pirate aesthetic because that sounded like the most fun, but guys like Zoro, Robin Hood, and Tulio from El Dorado could all probably be considered sword bards, and none of them have anything to do with pirates. Pirates. Just jovial fighters with a flair for the dramatic, a ton of style, and a song in their heart. What more can you ask for? So if you were able to kill a ruffian in a bar fight and still grab three phone numbers, can hang with the best of gishes while leaving your enemies sleeping with the fishes, and were somehow the most memorable part of an 11 year old game about pirates, templars, assassins, and Caribbean political conflict, 
For the voyage is long and the winds don't blow And it's time for us to leave her Guess what? You might be a swords bard. Hey guys, if you made it this far, thank you again for watching. These videos are so much fun to make, so I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you have a subclass you'd like to see in one of these, make sure to shout it out down below, as well as check the community tab to vote into the poll and make sure yours wins out. I usually post the poll the day after these go up, so subscribe to stay notified. Also, don't forget about the new Discord server we set up, so you can come talk to me about D&D stuff, find a game to play in, or just hang out with a bunch of cool people. We're having a ton of fun over there. But until next time, guys, Thank you very, very much for hanging out, and I'll see you very soon.